With this video we're going to talk about colour curves and how we can um, remedy some images that you may have which aren't particularly perfect and this is a good case in point I've got here. Uh, this was taken about a month ago on the Great Barrier Reef. Um, very proud to say I went to Australia. Um, absolutely beautiful area um, for the Great Barrier Reef but the digital camera showed it like I was in a swamp. So what we want to do here is we want to somehow tidy it up and get a lot more vibrance back into this image and to get the colors back to where they are there's several different techniques you can apply here um, it depends on how purist you want to be if you're an absolute whiz kid with Photoshop you'll want to be looking at the lab mode um, which I'll show you shortly what I'm going to do for the first part of this video is just deal in RGB mode which is um, what most of us deal with day in day out um, so I've got this picture here obviously it's very milky um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tidy it up. Now this is done um, by going into the image menu and choose adjustments and curves. Now before I go into this I just need to make you aware of a little bit of, I wouldn't say it's a bug but an annoyance, is that you're going into the image menu therefore what you're adjusting should be for the overall image it isn't. It is basically to deal with the layer that you're on. So make sure that you have got your background image or your base image or the selection of layers that you want to apply this to because it doesn't do it for the overall image it does it on the individual layer that you have selected. So with that warning in mind I'll go back into the image menu and so I'm going to choose curves. So there we go, we got our channel, red, green and blue, so if I wanted to on the colour curves I could just affect the blue channel. Well, technically we want to get rid of this milky blue haze which is on here, but generally it's not a case of just fiddling with the blue channel, we have to fiddle with the red and the greens as well, so I'm going to leave it on RGB. Now what you can do is by using this um, line here you can then drag it and then adjust the points to change the image. Now, oh, isn't this awful? Um, yeah, you can fiddle around with it to your heart's content until you get something the way you want it, but boy, it's a nightmare. It's horrible. I'm going to cancel that and go back in because there's a much, much better way. What we have is at the bottom we have these three icons, these three pipettes, and simply all it wants you to do is give a sample of a dark region, a grey region, and a light region, and then it will work it all out for you. So let's just give it a dark region. So click onto the um, black pipette, and I suppose the darkest area on this image is either the tank or the wetsuit. We know for definite wetsuits are generally black, so I'm going to click on that, and that tells it this is the default black colour and watch what happens, don't blink otherwise you'll miss it. Look at that, wallop, immediately all that blue has now been eradicated and leaving still the blue colours available. But it's a bit too dark, it's now washed away some of the colours we want to keep. No problem, what we now do is we now go to the grey section and we now choose a part of the um, image which is grey. So I'm going to choose this sort of front bit of this flashlight of, of her camera and that again makes it darker but don't worry we've got one final step which is putting in the lightness. So I'm going to just zoom in on the image a bit to find an area that I know for definite should be white which is here on the polka dots and if I click on that let's just zoom out. It's not bad it's not bad at all. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. It's a lot better than it was before. I'm seeing lots more detail. I'm seeing fish now that I didn't even know existed on the image. I can actually see a bit more of the background of the coral. Now, again, what I'm going to do is just cancel that just to show you what it looked like beforehand. Definite improvement, I've got to say, it's definite. Now, going back into image adjustments and curves, what you do have is this auto option. And what it simply does is it just finds the black, the grey and the white for you. Um, and if you click on auto, there you go. It's actually done a slightly better job than what I did when I clicked because you'll see there's some variance in colour on the actual um, wetsuit. So you're be better off sometimes clicking on auto and see what happens. And the colour curves, if you can see here, on the actual individual spectrums are fairly similar to what we had before. So there's auto, 
or you could actually do it manually. Sometimes auto is brilliant, sometimes it isn't. It's very hit and miss, so you'll just have to play around with it to your heart's content. Now, what I'm going to do is cancel that because I'm going to show you the lab mode instead. Now, this is done by going into the image menu, and the first thing you've got to do is change the mode. So at the moment, we're in RGB mode, red, green, and blue. We also have our um, color wheel um, version of it, which is what printers use. And then we also have the lab color mode. Um, if you're an absolute digital purist, digital photography purist, lab mode is what you'll tend to be in all the while because it gives you all the colors under the sun. It gives you a lot more control than what RGB can. So I'm going to go back into image now. I've changed it and choose curves. And you'll notice now that one of the pipettes is missing. You can't choose gray. Um, the reason being is because the way that lab mode works, which is lightness, alpha and um, beta channels, LAB, lab, um, it works on a different premise. Now, generally what you find is the B channel is where most of the colors are actually kept for the blues. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to click onto the pipette. I'm going to choose a dark image again. Whoa, look how different this is going now. Um, and choose white again to choose um, the polka dots. And you can see now there's more definition than before, but it's still not perfect. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the lightness channel. I'm going to do the same sort of things. Choose black again, and then choose white. And you just keep playing with it until you get the right sort of balance. And again, what we can do is I'm just going to cancel go back into it again but this time just choose auto and see what happens and there you go look what it's done this time that is a much better image than what RGB did so look at that just simply by fiddling around with the different modes and this color curves option you can get rid of a plethora of mess and get something a lot better now that's good but it's washed away a lot of color so what you may end up wanting to do is actually put on um, a vibrancy layer but you can't do vibrancy inside lab mode so what you tend to do is once you've done your color corrections in lab you then go back into image mode and change it back to RGB or CMYK etc etc now you've done that now vibrancy is available to us and now we can actually put a bit of vibrancy in and probably add a bit of saturation to get the colors coming back again and there we go much much more vibrant a lot clearer and what we've done there is we've got rid of the milky image now let's look at a different example something which is very very good with color curves when you're taking photographs um, through glass or perspex quite often the camera deals with what it's got in front of us the first thing it finds is the the glass or the perspex so it generally washes away a lot of the color that you're trying to get to in the distance so in this example this was in an aquarium and I've got my um, bits of reef here but the color is just washed away and it doesn't look great and also there is a sort of white milky film to it because it was going through the actual density of the perspex. So we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to leave it on RGB to start with and adjustments and curves and I'm going to just do auto for this first time around and look what it's done. It's immediately got rid of the milk again. I'll just cancel it, go back in again, choose curves but this time I'll manually do it so you've got to find a dark area, look what it's done, find a grey area bringing back a bit of the blue and then a white area which I would say is about there and there you go so auto and that I've done a very similar sort of job what I'm going to do though to finish off is I'm going to change the image into lab mode again and now do exactly the same thing again adjustments and curves and I'm just going to do auto and let's see what lab does Again, very good. It's cleared away all of the mess and we've got our image again. So I'm just going to leave it on lab mode and OK that. I'm going to finally change it back to RGB again. And the last thing I'm going to do is just add something that we did on a previous video, which is um, putting in a high pass filter, which would sharpen the image. So I'm going to just duplicate this layer and call it high pass. So you may want to watch the high pass video um, of what I'm doing here. So I'm not going to go into any detail. So the high pass option, I'm just going to lower a little bit just so I've got the definition the way I want it. 
OK and change it to hard light and there you go I've now got a sharp image again I've just turned off the high pass you can see it looks fuzzy and with high pass switched on probably a little bit of the opacity taken down to take a bit of the roughness off there you have it so hopefully color curves are no longer a mystery and they are a lot of fun so get playing around with your images thanks for watching